You've done uh, recently an, an enormous meta-analysis, yeah. uh, an analysis of analyses. and uh, <laughs> yeah. You've looked at a whole bunch of different types of learning techniques, yep. so things that students can use or do use um, to try to improve their learning. Right. Um, could you tell us a bit about, uh, about what you've done and, and, um, and what you found? Sure. Uh, with a large group of collaborators who actually worked very hard on this project for almost three years, we just reviewed lots of literatures, as you said, about the effectiveness of a variety of strategies. What we didn't look at were strategies that involved technology, because we wanted to focus on just those things that any student could use. And we chose those strategies for two reasons. Some of them that we wanted to evaluate, we thought they probably did work, but why not check out the evidence? A couple other strategies, however, we knew students used a lot, and we wanted to know, are these these really effective strategies, or they, should they be doing something else instead? So something that all students use, I still do it myself, is highlighter. We like to highlight things when we're reading. It's like a security blanket or something for learning. But it turns out highlighting itself doesn't really improve student learning, right? It doesn't increase achievement in any way. I would never take a highlighter away from a student. Again, it's like a security blanket. But it's just the beginning of the learning journey. It's not the end of it. Yep. So after you highlight all the important stuff, it turns out most textbooks highlight it for you anyway. Sure. You need to go back and use effective techniques to learn that material. So at least some of the things that students do, like highlighting and rereading, really don't have a big bang for the time buck, so to speak. So they'll spend time rereading, highlighting. They're really not learning a whole lot when, in fact, they can replace those strategies with other ones that really do boost their learning, So, which is exciting. Sure. So now we just have to retrain students, build a better student, right, to use better strategies. Interesting. So highlighting, rereading doesn't have much of an effect. No, um, it doesn't. Isn't that strange? You'd think re everybody rereads, right? You go back doesn't. to the material. Unfortunately, when you go back to reread, your eyes are moving across the page, right? It's probably late at night, the night before an exam, and your mind is somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Right, so basically mind-watering as I'm rereading. Students need to do things that are more, uh, to engage them more actively, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So in this analysis, mm -hmm. you, you looked at some things also that, that had a massive effect. Um, yes. What, um, obviously, I mean, it, it makes sense. I mean, a lot of people when they, when they are studying or cramming for an exam, mm -hmm. um, these are the things we do, but they might not be the most effective. Uh, what are the most effective? What are the things that actually work? Certainly cramming is not that effective, right? Uh, students think it's effective, partly because they can squeak by potentially on the exam, and then they'll just forget everything. I'm not suggesting students don't study the night before a test. It relieves anxiety and all this sort of thing. But there are better things they could do. First, instead of just cramming, begin studying two or three weeks before an exam. Okay, so you're distributing your practice out across time which is very important. So you're studying the same material over and over again. Now that does take a little planning, maybe a calendar to remind yourself, geez, it's two weeks before the exam, now I really need to hit the books, yep. versus just the night before when you're panicking and you try to cram. So distributed practice is really good, but distributed practice just tells you kind of a schedule of how you should be studying, kind of like the when of studying. Mm -hmm. But there are lots of what's, the things you can do instead of just rereading the material passively. And one that we find is really effective, and many others, there's about 100 years of research, uh, very exciting, showing how effective this is, just retrieval practice. Mm -hmm. So after you mark up your book, right, and about all the important things, and you go back, instead of just rereading everything you marked up, cover it up with your hand, and just try to recall from memory the content. Okay? Mm -hmm. And if the student gets that answer right from memory, that has a really potent effect on subsequent performance. They really learn it that much better. Of course, if they can't recall it from memory, then they can restudy at that point, but then they should come back and keep trying. So just retrieval practice, a really effective way to boost performance, especially if students use it distributed across time. Sure. Yeah. So, so it's kind of like flashcards, I guess. Absolutely like flashcards. And you know, most students at least say uh, they use flashcards, right, for simple paired associate learning, things like uh, foreign language vocabulary. But you can use flashcards for complex materials as well, concepts. So you write the key term on one side, definition on the other side, and then use that to basically test yourself and then to restudy. Even uh, important concepts in textbooks, right? How they take notes, they can take notes in better ways to actually support uh, the use of retrieval practice, which is an effective strategy mm -hmm. that many students don't use. They yeah. underutilize it, yeah. Yeah. So retrieval practice, I, so then it's, uh, I suppose, really pretty effortful uh, by comparison to rereading or highlighting. Yep. So it probably takes a fair bit of um, desire on the part of the student to, to want to learn that. It, it absolutely does. I mean, it's very easy to sit there and reread, 
mm. right? Especially when your mind is somewhere else thinking about how fun it's going to be after you take your exam type of thing. Yeah. Uh, where it does take a little bit more effort that engages you to try to retrieve the information. The nice thing is, out of all these studies that are done to compare rereading to retrieval practice, the time on task is always equated. Mm -hmm. So the students who are just rereading spend the same amount of time that the students are who are practicing retrieval. Okay. So yeah, it might be a little bit more effortful. You know, it's like a little bit more painful to try to retrieve stuff from yeah. memory. Yeah. But even the same amount of time used in one strategy versus the other, the students who are practicing retrieval using that little bit of extra effort are getting a major, uh, basically, increase in their performance. Interesting. Right? Yeah. It's, huh. And so the other aspect to that, the, the distributed learning, the spaced learning, mm -hmm. um, what does that entail? I mean, so does that entail yeah. studying um, a little bit each day? Or is it, uh, how many days do you need? Is it? Um, well, that's a $100 question, or maybe even $10,000 question. <laughs> uh, how, I, this is how I think about it. Let's say you're a student uh, getting ready for an exam. And maybe you decide, OK, I can give this four hours of my time. Mm -hmm. Most students because they think cramming is good, they'll spend that four hours the night before the exam and just study, study, study. Okay. They're going to do a lot better off if they take the same four hours and just basically segment it into four one-hour study sessions that are spread across, say, two weeks prior to the exam. Again, the same amount of time, but now that's just spread across time where you're coming back to the same material versus just kind of going over that material over and over again during one four-hour block. How much they need to do for long-term retention, uh, a whole lot. Okay, uh, This won't be a great strategy to learn all your course content. You've got to decide what's most important, what you think you're going to be tested on, and focus on that material. Uh, but the more is the better. The more, you, uh, the more often you come back and restudy, of course, yeah. and use retrieval practice, the longer you're going to retain that material. So for stuff that students really need to know, yeah. this is an essential strategy. Else they just forget stuff. I mean, you don't have to tell a student, right, that after they take a test that they cram for, mm -hmm. the next day they pretty much don't remember anything mm -hmm. that they studied. Yeah. Distributed practice ensures that you're going to remember that for a much longer period of time. My name is John. I think about reflection. Mm -hmm.